Welcome to Keep Dragon Bids. My name is Roxanne. I'm Pastor Abel's wife. And today we'll touch on the subject of who are God's elect. Who are God's elect? Of certain they are not random people in the body of Christ, for even the word random seems to suggest or imply the opposite of chosen or God's elect. The one that God has selected, not randomly, for God chose them before the foundation of the world, as in Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, 2 Timothy 1, 9, and verse 10, Titus 1, 2, and also in Psalms 139, verses 16 and 17. Who are they? Well, some of their more distinctive marks are, His elect will not be deceived by false prophets, and the Antichrist, for it is not possible to deceive the very elect. Matthew 24, verse 24. Mark 13, 22. God's elect cry or pray night and day. Luke 18, 7. And our Father hears their prayer. As Luke 18, 7 and verse 8 say. It said, And in my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isaiah 65, 22, verses 24. His elect have put off the old man and put on the new man. Colossians 3, 9, verse 9 to 14. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, Colossians 3, 12. Another very important mark is that God's elect acknowledge the truth. Titus 1, 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Titus 1, 2. Again, who are God's elect? They are the ones that inherit the seed, which is Jesus. Isaiah 65, 9 and Gal Galatians 3, 16. And I will bring forth the seed out of Jacob, and out of Judea, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell thereof. Isaiah 65, 9. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Isaiah 65, 23. Of course, they are with God, and are faithful and loyal, for they are with Him, are called chosen, and faithful. Revelation 17, 14. One can also say that God's elect are few, for it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 20, 16. Matthew 22, 14. For sure they are not a particular superior race, which many seem to believe. For there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is ni neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.28. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise, Galatians 3.29. Those that believe in Christ are Abraham's seed, Galatians 3.7. Not a Jew from the outside, but a Jew from the inside. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God, as Romans 2.29 says. To say that God's elect are the scattered twelve tribes of Israel and the church is a separate body and not Israel is a lie. For we are all one body to those that believe. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12.13 for there is one body, Ephesians 4, 4. And by one spirit are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile. Romans eleven seven says in this manner, What then, Israel, natural born seed, hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election, God's elect, hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. As you see, the election is not made up of only those of the law, but all of the faith of Abraham. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He says not and to seeds, 
as of many, but as of one. And thy seed is Christ. Galatians 3.16 Whosoever, Jew or Gentile, has this seed, which is Jesus, is part of the new Jerusalem. For he says in Hosea, And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Hosea 1, 6, 3, 11. John 1, 11, verse 12. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Romans 4, 16. To those that doubt that God's elect cannot be Gentile, here's this verse. The church that is at Babylon, the Gentile nation, elected together with you, saluted you, and so doth Marcus my son. 1 Peter 5.13 A Gentile church elected together with the elders. We see here. Wow, pretty cool, huh? Don't ever let anyone put you down and say we can't be God's elect because we are. Not of one of the twelve scattered tribes of Israel. Besides that, no one really knows your family history, your ancestors or your heritage to make such a statement. For most of the twelve tribes are scattered in, the, in this nation that is made up of many nations, the United States of America. Of course, this belief that Israel, the natural born, is God's elect, is one of the most important parts or lies that make up the weak foundation of the pre-tribe pre-trib rapture, sorry, for they believe that Israel will not be raptured up because God's elect have to stay during the tribulation. All verses pertaining to God's elect do not apply to the church, according to them. Well, as you see, that theory and satanic lie is easily debunked. So to them, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and most of the book of Revelations does not apply to the church. For the church is going to be gone, according to them. But when we see that God's elect is made up of not only of Jews, but of believers, Jews and Gentiles, one can easily understand that the church and God's elect will be here during the tribulation and will not be scattered to God until the final trump. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, uh, 52, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4, Matthew 24, 29 to 31, for we must remain until the coming of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17. As a matter of fact, no one who does not die before the second coming will not be gathered to God until the last trump. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, the final trump, the seventh. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, 31. Of course, this gathering does not happen until after the tribulations. Matthew 24, 29. In Matthew 24, we can see that the days of the Antichrist were shortened for the elect's sake. And except those days, the days of the Antichrist, should be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Matthew 24, 22. Of course, those days shall be shortened to five months, or 150 days. Revelations 9, 5, and 10. Revelations 12, 12. Revelations 6, 11. Revelations 17, 10. Matthew 24, 37. And Genesis 7, 24. And also in Revelations 12, 15. In addition, it is no doubt that the elect are the remnant that stand up against the Antichrist. Revelations 12, 17. Romans 9, 27 and also in Romans 11, 4. God foreknew and chose His elect before the foundation of the world. What is the word foundation in the Greek? It is in the Strong's number 2602, which is the word katabola. From Strong's number 2598, a deposition, founding figure conception, which is Strong's number 2598 in the Greek. It is the word katabola which means to throw down. In other words, foundation is the overthrow of Satan, or when he rebelled and his position in the heavens was downgraded, or thrown down from full access to limited access. 
For although Satan roams this world, 1 John 4.4, 4, he still has limited spot or access, Revelations 12.8. Place is in G5.117 topos, a spot but limited in occupancy to heaven, for he accuses us before our God day and night, Revelations 12.10, Job 1.6 and 7. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness, of this world against spiritual wickedness in high heavenly places. Ephesians 6 12. What are the spiritual wickedness doing in heavenly places if Satan and his angels have already been kicked out? Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. John 12 31. His position might have been cast down or downgraded, but Satan has not been kicked out of heaven. When Satan rebelled, or when iniquity was found in him, Ezekiel 28, 15 through 18, for the devil sins from the beginning, 1 John 3, 8. One third of those angels followed Satan, Revelations 12, 4. We know that not all are God's elect, so evidently there still remains the one third that did not follow Satan, and another one third that have to choose in this life who to follow. In other words, those of free will. God does not want another Satan episode to happen where there was a perfect heaven and one of his angels rebelled. It wasn't God who made the mistake, but Satan, Ezekiel 28, 15. So consequently, he allows his angels to be born in this world. One third are the elect and another one third who are not. And some rather to be born of woman, rather to be born of woman or seduced by woman, Jude 1, 6, 2, Peter 2, 4, for the word born again in G509 in the Greek means born from above because we are not created in our mother's womb, but we were created from above. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before we entered our mother's womb, we were with God. That was a true light which lighted every man that cometh in the world, John 1, 9. Even Nicodemus knew this when he told Jesus, Can one enter the second time into his mother's womb? John 3, 4. Although he did misunderstand the birth of the Spirit, he acknowledged that we enter in the mother's womb once the birth of the water, the water of the woman. Of course, one third followed Jesus, and God chose them to be his elect. For they did not follow Satan and Rem remained faithful, that we should be to the praise of His glory, who first, in the beginning, trusted in Christ, Ephesians 1, 2. That is why when God's elect first hear the gospel of our salvation, the word of truth, we automatically fall in love with His word and are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1, 13. For we were with Him since the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 13, and are naturally drawn in to the truth and love the truth, Titus 1, 1. And even though we were once lost, somehow, God brought us to Him. And even when we were at that moment, were not looking for God, as Paul. For he that God has chosen, will God cause to come near. Number 16, 5. Even though Paul was persecuting the church and a blasphemer, 1 Timothy 1, 13 tells us, and not seeking Jesus to repent, Jesus came to him and he entrusted him with the gospel. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 15. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 and 5. Why? Did God just randomly select him? No, of course not. What kind of God would that be if he created some to go to heaven and some to go to the lake of fire? That would mean that those did not make it. Did not make it because God made them that way. Did God make or randomly select to go to heaven and some to go to hell? I mean, did God say in his mind, I'll create some good people and create some bad people. That sounds pretty dumb. But that's what we're saying when we say that we started existing in our mother's room. And God randomly selected who, you know, those were going to serve him, his elect, and who were not. Is God unrighteous or unfair? Let's get back to Paul. Why did God choose him? Why did Jesus hunt him down? Why did Jesus come to him instead of Paul seeking him by free will? Jesus knew and predestinated him before the foundation of the world. 
God knew who Paul was, for Jesus chose him because he was one that did not follow Satan in the first world age or before the catapult. Go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen elect or selected vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Acts 9.15 This would explain why God hated Esau and loved Jacob even before they were even born. Romans 9.11-14 As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans 9.13 Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Did God just decide to hate Esau and love Jacob randomly? Did he use any mini miny mo to pick them? It was because of what Esau did in the first world age. Plus he proved it by selling his birthright for one morsel of meat. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 16. Do you think that God just programmed him to sell his birthright just to prove that he was right in hating him before he was born? God forbid. Or did God know that he was going to sell his birthright right because he knows the future? What God is free will and why do we have, what's God, what is God's free will? And why do we have to pass through this painful world if God already knows who's going to make it to heaven and who is going to make it to hell? Even those God's elect's names are written in the book of life of, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelations 13.8 and Revelations 17.8 and are chosen to serve Him and to lead, they still have some form of free will because they can still lose their salvation. 1 Chronicles 28, 4-10 Psalm 69-28 states, Let them be blotted out of the book of, of the living and not be written into the righteous. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book revelations 22 19. so the notion of one saved are we saved because we are god's elect that's a fraud is there more compelling evidence that god knew us before the world began because we existed before the world began let me just mention a few first of all ephesians 1 4 and 5 state according as he hath chosen elected or selected us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. How could, how could he choose us in his mind before we even existed, as most seem to suggest? We are left with the same argument, argument of before. Did Jesus randomly think and pick us you know, who were going to be his elect and who were going to go to hell. Jesus chose his elect because when Satan rebelled, they did not follow him. And how could he choose us if we did not exist? We must have existed. existed. In Titus it says, in like manner, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Titus 1-2. Again, how could he promise us eternal life if we did not exist? God's elect were even given grace before the world began, 2 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. We can find also the same in 1 Peter 1, 2, where it states, states, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. For whom... He did not foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8.29 Please read Romans 8.26-38 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 Again, did he choose some to be saved and some not to be, just randomly? Even in John 6, we find this verse, But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning, a commencement of time or place, who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. John 6, 6, 4. And ye shall also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. 
Strong uh, number 6746. Arc <coughs> Arcane. Commencement, chief, in place, or time. John 15, 27. One of the often quoted verse is in Ephesians 2, 10, which states, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Of course, this study is extensive, but very interesting. We hope and pray this short study was helpful to you. Don't worry. If you know that Satan comes first and the Antichrist before the second coming of Christ, and know that there is more to God's word than what you've been taught, more than likely you are one of God's elect. Thank you, and we pray that you have enjoyed the study. And don't forget to like and, and to su subscribe. We appreciate your prayers and feedback. Godspeed and kick dragon.